All right, so I'm trying to replicate the helium-filled um, bubble dessert that I saw on Penn and Teller Tell a Lie. And what surprised me was the fact that it was a lie, because from what I know, all of the science is there. You can actually make this helium-filled bubble dessert. So what I'm trying to do is to synthesize what I saw on TV. Um, what they did on TV was apparently just soap and helium. So you can't actually eat it, you can't actually make a dessert. But um, I found a patent for a child's product using, um, it's for a child's product which is basically edible bubbles. So you blow the bubbles from the bubble wand and kids can catch them on their tongue and eat them. So what they use is instead of using soap, which is toxic, they use a sugar ester, a sucrose ester which is non-toxic. It's used as a food thickener, it's used in cosmetics, um, and it's a surfactant, just like soap, meaning it can form the bubble structure. Um, so what they did was they used the sugar ester in place of soap in their patent to make this kid's bubble juice and, you know, use the sweetener and the water in order to make the bubble juice. So I intend to make that stuff bubble it full of helium to make the floating dessert. So in order to make the sucrose ester, what you need is sucrose, which is cane sugar, uh, steric acid, some sort of fatty acid, some sort of fatty carboxylic acid. I chose steric acid because it's what was suggested in the patent. You can use other organic carboxylic acids as well. Um, you react those to an equal molar amounts, meaning there's about the same number of particles of both of them. It's a one-to-one -one, um, reaction. And you react it in the presence of a sodium or potassium catalyst. Um, I chose sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. Um, another chemist suggested potassium hydroxide, which is a better catalyst, but I'm intending to eat this product. So I wanted to choose something that is known to be safe to eat. Potassium hydroxide is toxic, at least in large quantities. It's probably okay in small quantities. But to be on the safe side, I chose sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. So it's definitely non-toxic. It's okay um, to eat at least small amounts of what I hope to make. So, and you use about 20% by mass of the sodium catalyst. So what you do is you mix all that stuff together um, and you heat it up to about 130 degrees and react it for about 16 hours. It's kind of a slow reaction, so you have to let it react for a long period of time. So I did that yesterday and what I got was this. It's hopefully a sucrose ester. Um, meaning it is a non-toxic soap-like product. It's a surfactant. So what I'm hoping to do is take what I made yesterday, purify it, combine it with the other ingredients described in the patent, and hopefully produce this edible bubble juice. Then bubble it through with helium to produce the floating bubble dessert that I saw on the TV show. It seems possible because all of the science, to my knowledge, all of the science is there. It's real. So that's what I intend to do. So the next step is to take this stuff, purify it, mix it with the other ingredients, and hopefully produce the helium bubble dessert. All right, so I came back from lunch, and this thing has been stirring and heating and it is full of bubbles which is a very good sign that I've produced a sugar ester. Alright, so after a day of purifying and extracting the sucrose east ethers, um, sorry, sucrose esters, I have created what I think is a pretty darn good bubble solution. It is about 10 grams of sucrose esters. Um, it's about three grams of gelatin, which is a water-soluble polymer 
commonly used in food. It's the gelling agent in Jello. And I added a few milliliters of glycerin, which is a sweetener, and about 40 milliliters of water. And what I've come up with is a solution that makes bubbles and also maintains the bubble structure for a long period of time. So for example, when I blow in this, it produces the bubble foam on top and the bubbles are actually staying there for long periods of time as long as you don't stir it up and destroy the structure. Um, so hopefully this solution, I haven't tasted it yet, but all of the ingredients in it, in theory, are edible. And if you add enough sugar and sweetener, kids will eat anything. Having another setback. Um, the bubble solution bubbles wonderfully in the beaker. Problem is, when you pump it full of helium, I got this from a party store, it's like a balloon filling tank, um, and I just added a pipette to the end of it. When you bubble helium through it, it will produce the bubble structure. The problem is, it produces the bubble structure inside the beaker, and whenever the bubbles get to the top, they just spill over and fall to the floor. So apparently the bubble is not light enough to actually take off, even if it is filled with helium. So sugar esters, for the purposes of creating a helium-filled dessert, are non-functional. They're just too heavy. They don't allow for the formation of the spherical floating particles. So I've turned to another source, and that's sodium lauryl sulfate. It's the surfactant in dishwashing soap. So yes, there is some truth to the idea that you have to use some sort of detergent in order to produce a bubble. But sodium lauryl sulfate, I looked up the toxicity, and for somebody my size, I'm about 150 pounds, for somebody my size, in order to get sick from this stuff, I would have to eat about 87 grams of it. So, you know, I would have to drink basically half of this entire bottle of stuff. And if you're dealing with a bubble dessert, you're dealing with exceptionally teeny, teeny, tiny quantities of stuff. So in the amount that I put into my solution, it would be considered safe and non-toxic. In fact, I looked up a toy that they used to sell, which is candy bubbles, and it actually used sodium lauryl sulfate as the surfactant, not sugar esters, probably because they knew that they didn't work. So what I have here is I have 20 milliliters of glycerin, which is going to act like my um, binding agent, and exactly one gram of sodium lauryl sulfate to act as my surfactant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this pipette, which I've cut into the shape of a bubble wand, I'm going to hook this into my helium tank, blow helium through, it will produce a bubble that will actually take off and float to the ceiling. My helium tank purchased at a party store. My makeshift bubble wand made out of a pipette. And that is a helium filled bubble. And it's made mostly out of glycerin, which is sweet. Like I said, one part of sodium lauryl sulfate as the surfactant, 20 parts of glycerin. So no matter how much of this you eat, you would have to eat ridiculous quantities of it in order to have toxicity in your system. So I say that that pretty much would be a reasonable 
dessert type of thing. All right, it's been a really long day. I've been here since about seven this morning and it's about 6.30 now, so I've been here for about 11 and a half hours doing the stupid bubble experiment. Um, not to count the hours that I did yesterday preparing the sugar esters. So, in conclusion, I don't think that it is possible to form the helium filled dessert as seen on the Penn and Teller Tell a Lie. It looked really promising. It really did. It seemed like it was possible scientifically. You can make edible bubbles, you can fill them with helium, they can achieve a floating state. But the problem is. Number one, you cannot eat large quantities of them because of the sodium lauryl sulfate. Number two, the bubbles have to achieve a relatively large size in order to achieve liftoff. Even with a good surfactant like sodium lauryl sulfate, the bubble chemicals are simply too heavy um, to float with those tiny, tiny, tiny bubbles that they showed on the TV show. It's just the laws of physics, it's not going to happen. You have to have enough buoyant force of the helium to counteract the force of gravity pulling the chemicals downward, to pull the bubble downward. Also, I've had some problems trying to actually capture the bubbles like they did. So, all in all, it was very well faked. I fell for it. Um, I really wanted this helium dessert thing to work, and it really seemed possible. I mean, there are patents in place patenting this um, non-toxic bubble juice. You can float bubbles with helium, but the mass of the bubbles are simply too heavy to produce that sort of light, foamy dessert texture. Also, the bubbles are very, very fragile. You dip your spoon into them, they're going to pop, and you're just not going to get to eat them. So, kind of disappointed that I couldn't duplicate the lie. Also, to show you the disaster that is my room, after trying all of this stupid bubble experiment, I have some lovely toxic chemicals inside here. Got some phosphoric acid over there. Got all kinds of nasty, bubbly, ugly stuff here. Got every kind of gelatin and powder you could want. There's the corn syrup. Flammable liquid. Ooh, that's the acetone. I got, I don't, I don't know if you can see it, but my floor is covered with lovely sticky stuff. Gelatin and glycerin everywhere. My hands are all sticky. There's crap in the sink. I used up an entire roll of paper towels. Yeah, my room's a mess. But, anyway, it's all in the pursuit of science. And there's my $35 helium tank. Could not make dessert out of you. Too bad. Yeah, am I cleaning any of it up before I go home? Hell no. I'm going home. I'm gonna order me, I'm gonna get me a Whataburger, and I'll clean this crap up on Monday.